Hi. In this section, we will be taking proportion and variation. Let's start with proportion. A proportion is a statement of equal ratios, which means the two ratio, the two sets of ratio are equal to each other. And as we can see, the symbol for proportion is two full columns. Two ratios are said to be equal when written in fractional form. The fractions are equivalent. You can solve and compare ratios using cross multiplication. And uh, we can see that in the following set of figures, 4 ratio 20 is proportional to 3 ratio 15. Or when we want to write it in fraction, we have 4 over 20 equals 3 over 15. We can check back that by cross multiplying. We have 4 multiplied by 15 equals 3 multiplied by 20. Therefore, 60 equals 60. Let's check some examples. Example 1. A over 6 equals 4 over 12. When we want to solve for that, we we'll cross multiply. A multiplied by 12 equals 6 multiplied by 4. 12A equals 24. When we divide both sides by 12, A equals 2. So that we have 2 over 6 equals 4 over 12. Do you understand that? Let's move to the second example. 63 over B equals 9 over 5. When we want to solve for that, we we'll cross multiply. 63 multiplied by 5 equals 9 multiplied by B. This gives us 315 equals 9B. When we divide both sides by 9, B equals 35. In example 3, we have the figures written in proportion already. Then 8 ratio 5 is proportional to 12 ratio C. We need to solve for C. Then we can have it in fractions. 8 over 5 equals 12 over C. We cross multiply. 8 multiplied by C equals 5 multiplied by 12. 8C equals 60. We divide both sides by 8, then our C equals 7.5. We move to variation. Variation is the change in one quantity with respect to another, which means like proportion, variation also deals with two sets of quantity, while proportion deals with two sets of ratio. Two quantities varies with each other if there exists a relationship between them. This means that a change in one, be it positive or negative, will lead to a change in another, either positive or negative again. And this is possible if there exists a non-zero constant, K. There are two types of variation. We have direct variation and inverse variation. In direct variation, if quantity 1 varies directly to quantity 2, then an increase in quantity 1 will lead to an increase in quantity 2. Do you get that? Okay, let me come again. If there is an increase in quantity 1, then there will be an increase in quantity 2 in direct variation. So also, if there is a decrease in either quantity, there would be a decrease in the other quantity. It is represented as A is directly vary or varies directly to B. Then we have A equals, we introduce the constant. Don't forget, it must be a non-zero constant, which is represented as K. A varies directly to B. A equals constant B. Where A is quantity 1, B is quantity 2, K is the constant. Let's check example 4. Suppose Y varies directly as Z and Y is 50. When Z is 20, find Y when Z is 16. Then we write out our equating formula which gives us Y equals K, the constant Z. 
then we we'll want to represent our figures y is 50 then we we'll put 50 equals k then z is 20. when we divide both sides by 20 in the equation k equals 2.5 which means our constant is 2.5 when we are relating any other quantities in this direct variation equation then 2.5 will be our constant let's see why now when z is 16. we have y equals 2.5 the constant z then y equals 2.5 multiplied by 16 which is our z then our y equals 40 which means when y z is 16 our y is 40. In example 5, if Ade used 85 Naira to buy 15 candy bars, how many candy bars would Jumoke buy with 150 Naira? We are asked to approximate our answer to a whole number. Then, when we want to solve for that, 85 equals K15. Don't forget the K is the constant. When we divide both sides by 15, our constant is 5.67. So, for Jumoke with 115, 50 Naira, how many candy bars would she get? Then we'll input our figures again. 150 equals the constant K, C. Then 150 equals the constant is 5.67, C. Then we divide both sides by 5.67. Then our C equals 26.45. Then we we'll run up to O number Jumoke gets 26 candy bars. Moving on to inverse variation. In inverse the variation, it is slightly different from the direct variation. Don't forget, in direct variation, increase in quantity 1 leads to increase in quantity 2. But in inverse variation, increase in quantity 1 leads to decrease in quantity 2 and vice versa which means a increase in quantity 2 will lead to decrease in quantity 1 then it is represented as a directly here uh, inversely i mean varies with b therefore we have a equals the constant over b where a is quantity one b is quantity two k is our constant so let's check example six now suppose y varies inversely as z and y is five when z is two we are asked to find y when z is 15. we want to solve for that y equals k which is the constant over z then 5 equals k over 2 when we cross multiply our k the constant equals 10. now we need to solve for y when z is 4 then our y equals 10 the constant over 4 which gives us our y as 2.5 so when z is 4 our y is 2.5 you can notice that the first one y is 5 z is 2 then the second one when y is 5 when z is 15 y is 2.5 we can see the inverse relationship between the two in example 7 if it took 15 men two hours to complete a job how many hours would it take 10 men 10 men to complete the same job then we can represent it as m representing the men equals k over h representing the hours then we have 15 equals k over 2 k equals 30 which means our constant in this situation is 30 then we want to solve for 10 men on the same job m equals 30 the constant over h then 10 equals 10 over 10 equals 30 over h then our 10 h when we cross multiply equals 30 we divide both sides by 10 h equals 3. this means that it will take 10 men three hours to complete the same job in summary in this section we've learned that proportion shows equality between fraction ratios and fraction which means proportion shows 
equality. It shows that two sets of ratios are equal to each other, as we've explained earlier. And also, when you want to solve for variation, be it indirect variation and the inverse variation, these are steps you need to take note of. One, you write the variation equation out. Then secondly, you substitute your initial value and solve for your constant, which is k. Then you rewrite the variation equation. Now you will put the value of k in the new variation equation. Then you substitute your remaining values and get or solve for the unknown. Behind this section, you have some practice questions you could take to learn better proportion and variation.